Tax Objective 8 Problems Problem 1. Larry and Sally have gardens in the shape of similar rectangles. The ratios of the lengths of corresponding sides is 2 to 3. Which choice represents the ratio of the areas of the gardens? One of the key concepts tested in Objective 8 is how the change in side length affects perimeter area and volume. Here we have a side length ratio used to determine the ratio of areas. What I like to do for these problems where there are no drawings is to create my own. So I created two squares, one with a side length of 2 and one with a side length of 3. The area of the smaller square with the side length of 2 is 2 times 2 or 4 square units and the area of the larger square with the side length of 3 is 3 times 3 or 9 square units. So these two shapes have a ratio of areas of 4 to 9. And this is where we find our 4 to 9 ratio. So we circle our correct answer B. It so happened that the numbers I picked out made it easy. But with this method, we could have used any numbers for the sides or squares as long as the ratios were 2 to 3. And the ratio of the areas still would have reduced to 4 to 9. Problem 2. What is the area of Gabriel's yard shown in the figure below? There are a couple different ways to do this problem that are pretty easy in my opinion. The first one we'll look at is found in the formula chart, the formula for the area of a trapezoid. And that formula is area equals base 1 plus base 2 times height over 2, written as A equals quantity B1 plus B2 times H over 2. In the formula, we'll let B1 equal the lower base, 175 feet. We'll let B2 equal the upper base, or 150 feet. And here's the formula with the correct numbers in the calculator. Press Enter. Here's our answer, 12,187.5. We don't see the number in answers B, C, or D. So we'll move the calculator screen to the right to be able to see answer A. Then we see our answer here in A. So we circle the correct answer. If you aren't able to see the trapezoid in the figure, it is pretty easy to figure this out as a composite shape of this 75 by 150 foot rectangle and the area of this triangle, which is found by taking 25 by 75 and dividing by 2. And added together, the area of these shapes is the same as what we found earlier with the trapezoid formula confirming that A is our correct answer. Problem 3. A farmer is storing corn in a cone-shaped bin as shown in the figure below. What is the approximate volume of the bin? For this problem, we'll again resort to our tax formula chart, this time for the volume of the cone. And we see here that the formula is V equals one-third B times H. We need to be aware that in this formula, the capital B is the area of the base of the cone. This is right from the tax formula chart. And the area of the base of this cone is going to be pi r squared, the area of the circle. And in our calculator, that's going to be pi times 40 squared. I got to the pi key by pressing second, then the rooftop key below the clear key on the right side of the keypad. And that number is about 5,027 feet. Now we can apply the one-third B times H formula. Note that for the B, I chose A and S, which I got by pressing second, then the negative sign key on the lower right of the key path. Press Enter. We get this number just over 117,000 cubic feet, and it's approximately this answer here, and we circle our correct answer A. Not too tough of a problem, but we had to know how to apply the formulas from the formula chart, interpreting all the symbols properly in order to get a correct answer. Problem 4. A circular pizza has a diameter of 14 inches and is cut into 8 equal slices. To the nearest tenth of an inch, which answer represents the area of one slice? This problem is just a multi-step area problem. Conceptually, we need to find the area of the circle described in the problem, a circle with a diameter of 14 inches. And then we need to find the area of one slice by dividing the total area by 8 since there are 8 equal slices. We can find the area of the circle by going to our formula chart and it's A equals pi r squared where A is area and r is the radius of the circular pizza. And we get the radius by taking the diameter of 14 inches and dividing it into two parts so the radius is 7 inches. Next we enter pi r squared in our calculator then press enter. This number nearly 154 square inches is the area of the pizza. Next, we divide by 8 to get the area per slice, since the pizza has 8 slices of equal area. Press Enter. We get about 19.24 square inches, which, round to the nearest tenth, is this number, 19.2.
so we circle our answer D. But before moving on to the next problem, let's do a little error analysis. Let's say that instead of using the radius of 7, that we forgot to divide the diameter by 2, so we got pi times 14 squared. Press enter. This number just happens to be about uh, 615.75, which would round to answer A. But since the formula is applied wrongly, this would be a wrong answer, and that's independent of dividing by 8. This is just a hook a test writer puts out there to trip up students who aren't careful. Problem 5. A polygon has a perimeter of 53.6 inches. If the lengths of the edges of the polygon are multiplied by a factor of 2 to 1, what is the perimeter of the resulting polygon? The thing we need to understand when looking at these problems is what happens to perimeter, area, and volume when we multiply dimensions by scale factors. For a perimeter that is a length or a one-dimensional number, a factor of 2 would be times 2 to the power of 1 or 2. For area it would be 2 to the power of 2 which equals 4 and for volume it would be 2 to the power of 3 which would equal 8. In this one, perimeter for length is what applies. And 2 times 53.6 equals 107.2, and that is found here, and we circle our answer C. Problem 6. Savannah has planted a circular flower garden around the corner of her deck as shown. To the nearest tenth, what is the area of her garden? Here's another area problem. We have the basic area formula, which is A equals pi r squared. We are given two things, the radius of the garden at 4 yards and the angle of the corner of the deck jutting into the garden makes surrounding that deck, and that's 120 degrees. The area of an entire circle is given by the formula A equals pi times 4 squared. We press enter and get the total area of the circle of a little over 50 square yards. The crucial step is the next one. We take the ratio of the angle around the deck to the entire circle, which is 120, to 360 which simplifies to one-third then we multiply this one-third by the total area of the circle and we get this a little over 16.75 and here's where we find the closest to that answer in C which is 16.8 is this one the right answer the test writer has set you up to bite on this hook what we need to realize is that the area we're trying to find is the area of the garden and not the deck area of the circle and that would be the area of the total circle, about 50.265 minus the 16.755, and that comes out to 33.51, and that's down here below our biting fish. And we circle our correct answer, D. I hope you understand how you must carefully consider every answer before choosing. Problem 7. Raul has a square piece of wood on which he is painting two different scenes. He is planning to separate the two scenes with a piece of braided rope as shown below. About how many centimeters long will the braided rope need to be? We're going to find the length of this piece of rope separating the two areas shown here in red. One way to look at this problem is to use Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In order to use this, we need two sides of the right triangle. This other side or leg of that right triangle is also two meters. So these are our A and our B to use in the formula and here it is entered in the calculator and that means that C squared is 8. To find C or the length of the braided rope we take the square root of 8 and that number is about 2.83 meters but all of our answers are in centimeters so to convert meters to centimeters all we have to do is multiply by 100 and that gives us about 283 centimeters and this is where we find it amongst our answers and we circle our correct answer D. Problem 8. What is the size of the unshaded region below inside the rectangle? In this problem we need to find the area of this rectangle and then find the area of the unshaded region of the rectangle which would be these three areas together. How much of the rectangle is filled by the unshaded triangles? Well this largest unshaded triangle is offset by one of the shaded triangles because their areas are equal. And these two remaining small unshaded triangles are equal in area to the other remaining shaded triangle. And that means that the unshaded triangles represent one half of the total area of the rectangle. So we need to find the area of the rectangle. Its length is x plus 2x plus x units on the top. And that 
totals to be 4x in length and the width of the rectangle is x units so our area of the rectangle is 4x times x and that equals 4x squared and since the unshaded region is half the area of the rectangle that would be 4x squared divided by 2 and that is 2x squared and that is the area here in the first answer and we circle our correct answer A. This is sort of an SAT caliber question but tax problems sometimes are like this. Problem 9. The sketch of an exercise ball is shown below. What is the approximate surface area of the ball? This problem is finding the surface area of a sphere and here from the tax formula chart is the formula for the surface area of a sphere. It's the surface area equals 4 times pi times the radius squared. What is our radius? Is it 28 inches? No, our radius is one half the diameter or 14 inches. So this is what our formula looks like inserted into place on our calculator. The number 14 replaces the R in the formula. Press enter. Here's our answer, about 2,463 square inches. Looking at our answers, this number would be troubling except for one thing. In the text of the problem, we see the word approximate. So 2,500 inches is our best answer, and we circle our correct answer, B. Problem 10, a boy is flying his kite on the end of a 750 foot string. The kite is directly over the boy's father who is standing 450 feet from the boy. How high is the kite if the boy is holding the end of the string four feet above the ground? Since this problem has no diagram or sketch, it's a good idea to make a drawing. The drawing need not be exact, but reasonable enough to give us some kind of physical picture of what's going on so we can understand the situation a lot better. We also have to remember that whatever height we calculate, we'll have to add four feet to the calculation to get the elevation of the kite above the ground. The best way to do this problem, I think, is to look at the answers first. Answer A, 54 feet, is way too low, so we cross it off. And answer D, 875 feet, is longer than the hypotenuse of the string length, and so is impossible, and we cross it off as well. Between the two remaining answers, 304 feet looks pretty low, so if we had to, we would cross it off as well. But let's use the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But since we're finding one of the legs of the triangle, we use the version using if you have the A and C and need to find the B, then you take A squared and subtract it from squared C. So that makes 750 squared minus 450 squared. And so B squared is 360,000. To find B, we take the square root of 360,000. We press enter, we get 600 feet. Remember that the boy was holding the string four feet above the ground. We have to add that as well, and we get 604 feet. And this is the same distance found in answer C. And we circle our correct answer C. I would like to finish by doing some error analysis of this problem. If we hadn't been careful and made a drawing or otherwise thought much about it, here's what we could have done. We could have taken 750 squared plus 450 squared to get this number, 765,000. And the square root of 765,000 just happens to be nearly 875, which is very close to answer D. So the test writer was just putting the answer out there to trick you when you made a mistake. Don't be a sucker. Don't take the bait. This has been Tax Objective 8 Problems. Thanks for viewing.